Hi friends, welcome back to Julia at Home. This video is about our ancient Rome unit study. So this was the final study we did as part of our ancient history year, um, which was my daughter's first grade year and my son pre-K four or five year. So he was, he had just turned five basically when we had done this. And this is probably my biggest unit that we did in that year. It was just something we all were really interested in and I had a lot of resources for. So I'm gonna dive in. As usual, I have a spine. I was using Story of the World, Ancients, Volume One. And um, I don't know if there, yeah, there, I, I had all of the, um, I put all of the Rome chapters together. So I think at some point it starts with the rise of Rome, Roman's empire, Rome, the Roman empire, Rome's war with Carthage. And then it goes to India and China for a little bit. And then it comes back to Julius Caesar and such. So I actually had, I'd put it in a different format. You can see in some of my other videos, how I, I kind of moved things around. So we did all of those at once um, instead of skipping around. And we had done the other stuff earlier. So this was actually the last part we got to as we ended the year with the fall of Rome. And I used the activity book as well, mostly for coloring pages and also for map work. Um, as the year went on, I used the maps more and more specifically with them, I guess. I, I printed them out for them during, th during the whole year, but I started using the map questions, like the map work that is given in um, the activity book for them so that they have specific things to color in and, and label. I also, at this point in the year, had history quests, so we also read the corresponding chapters in history quests with their history hops. So those are basically the spines that I used following along. And then I've added a lot of resources onto that. So um, again, how children lived. If you see my other history unit study videos, I've used this for pretty much all of them. And it's just a two page spread there. There's the Roman empire. So that's cool. And um, I will be continuing to use that. So you will see that again. And also I have Historium. I got this, I think partway through this last year, maybe the end of, of that year. Um, and so I didn't have it for all of the different ancient cultures we studied, um, but I did have it for Rome. And it's just basically, um, it's fun pictures, essentially. And basically it's just beautiful pictures of artifacts <laughs> with a description uh, for you. I like that fresco. And this worked really well in conjunction with our Artistic Pursuits book. And um, I think this would be really great if you have children old enough to do a book of centuries, this like in lieu of going to a museum or in addition, preferably to going to a museum or site, they could color something in here. So especially as the world is right now, you might not have the opportunity to get to a museum. So this is a great option. Other books I have, City. Let's see, so this one is a David Macaulay. I really like his books. Um, I might like them more than my children, but I really like them, so I read them anyway. And I just do a couple a couple pages a day. This one goes through the building of a Roman city. It's a fictional city, but he kind of, he goes through the methods that they used at the time for building and how a, a city would have, you know, been, the site would have been chosen and um, they would have like figured out directionally which way the roads were gonna go and, um, the, the soldiers who were also the builders would get like uh, plots um, to build houses on. And it talks about like their sewer system and the roads and aqueducts and all sorts of things. And so I found this really interesting um, and I really like the pictures in it as well. So um, this is one that my kids would tell you is not their favorite, but I keep reading them because I enjoy them. Um, the story of writing, there's a chapter in here on Romans and writing, if I can find it, Romans and writing. So we read this one as well. I think this is the one, um, where it like talks about an actual letter that they found and like the situation of, they kind of talk to you as if this is what you, who you were and who you would be if you wrote this letter, I guess. Um, it was, and it was, it was very interesting. So and these each chapter is short so i'm not reading through this whole book at once right we've done a chapter for ancient egyptians um so just a chapter here and there and you will have seen in my other units as well i often like to include mythology now the roman gods are actually very similar to the greek gods 
Some of them even have the same name. Most of them have new names. Um, so a lot of their stories are very similar, but there are stories about like the founding of Rome um, with Romulus and Remus and some others. Um, so I, I got two books because I wasn't sure. So um, this is Roman Myths, um, retold by Geraldine McCoffrin, maybe? I'll have it linked below. Um, and I also got the Classic Starts Roman Myths book, um, retold from classic originals so um and actually they had different stories in them so i just read a few out of each i didn't end up reading the entire things because we just had so much to get through and it was the end of the year so i was starting planting time um but i i liked both of these like you could just get one and either one would be fine i think they both had the romulus and remus myth romulus and remus smith in there which is probably the most important and it was actually also in our, um, both our spines, our story of the world and history quest. So um, you'll hear that story over again. It was just the story about the founding of Rome. So if you're doing a study of ancient Rome, it's uh, a little unsettling of a story. Um, one brother kills another, but it is important, I think, for um, learning about Rome. This is our Roman numerals book. And I didn't even realize all the rules for the Roman numerals. And so it kind of goes through uh, the rules of how they work. I like knew the basics. I basically like one through 10. Um, but it actually has, you could count. We did not actually count all the pigs, but it shows you the Roman numerals and how many pigs. Um, so, and, and then it has um, like, basically word problems in the back and it's not a good way but like problems in the back where you have to it tells you how many of each there are you have to find them it's an interesting book it was a little difficult for my kids um we read a little bit um but it was more interested for me um and i'm fine if they don't fully get it right now it's an introduction to roman numerals for them and we'll come back to it again later um i also got this game though i like games and this is a roman numeral uh dice game i guess um i won't get through all the rules the, the rules came in many different languages so i i was like trying to read them in italian and my kids were not impressed um but uh it's just it oh there's different numerals obviously on here and there's um yeah it's just a dice game in with roman numerals and i found it fun so again probably for slightly older kids or adults my son is really into soldiers and such um it might just be a five-year-old boy type of thing um so i i did want to make sure to get some specifically on that topic so we have um, going to war in Roman times and this is actually a really good resource. I think it's an older book um, And I don't know if there's more in the series because it's like an armies of the past. So it seems like it's a series um, But this is like really well done lots of good information. I think we've read it multiple times throughout our study um, And he keeps coming back to it. It's been it's been hiding so in a pile so that I could record this video for you So I'm sure as soon as it goes back out on the shelf, he will be looking at it that's um, going to war in Roman times. I also have You Wouldn't Want to Be a Roman Soldier, which is another in the You Wouldn't Want to Be series. And it's actually kind of repetitive with that one. Um, my daughter sat down and listened to us go through this. She did not sit down for all the times we read through going to war in Roman times. So I, you know, but she, she got the information. I, I asked them to each draw something related to Roman soldiers. Um, so she she did <laughs> and we also have magic treehouse warriors in winter and I also well I gifted my son the like resource the the non-fiction companion so there's a non-fiction companion that goes with this on warriors it's I don't think it's just Roman though I think it goes through different ancient warriors but I think it's in his room right now I didn't pull it out but we have that as well we didn't read it for school um, but we did read them this one and I have Who Was Julius Caesar, very important figure if you're going to learn about ancient Rome. It, it basically also talks about how, so when you're learning about ancient Rome, there's like three major phases, I would say. There's the Roman kings, um, which is how Rome started out. And then there's the Roman Republic. And then there's the empire. And Julius Caesar is key in how Rome moved from a republic to an empire with an emperor. 
Um, so he's important to learn about. And um, we also have the Jim Weiss, Julius Caesar audio book. It's, it's basically he did a retelling of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. And it's really good. It's really good. If you have older kids, I also recommend actually doing Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Um, it's just, yeah, I recommend it. But my kids were still so young, I didn't feel like we needed to. We had Who Was and we had the Jim Weiss version. And I'm happy with that for Julius Caesar. Um, we also, we spent a week on Pompeii. And so I have several resources for Pompeii. Um, I have a lot of these are repetitive, but okay. I have the magic tree house vacation under the volcano. I have Pompeii buried alive, um, which is an easy reader. So my daughter could probably read this herself now, but I read it to them. Um, and I think that's perfectly fine. And then you wouldn't want to live in Pompeii. So these all talk about Pompeii, obviously, and what happened there. Um, it's just interesting. I know as a child, when I learned about it, it's something that really sticks in your imagination. So um, those are our resources on Pompeii. Let's see. Okay. Some other books that I liked. You Wouldn't Want to Be a Roman Gladiator. We had to talk about gladiators and the Colosseum. And I have something else in the Colosseum I will come to when I get to activities. Um, let's see. Honest History. Okay. So this is actually a history magazine. So you can get a subscription or you can just buy the individual issues. I, I don't know if they're on like six or seven or eight or somewhere around there now. This is issue four, Story of an Empire about ancient Rome. And it just, it has lots of facts. It, there are um, stories, activities, all sorts of things in here. I really like the pictures Some on Latin a little bit. Um, though this goes through uh, the Julio-Claudian emperors which is really interesting if um, <laughs> this is not appropriate for kids, but for adults, um, the mini series I Claudius is an older mini series. And when I was in elementary school, upper elementary, I think it was in fifth grade, we were studying ancient history and we watched portions of that. And so I actually went back and watched some of it. Um, but it's yeah, totally not appropriate for kids. <laughs> Definitely pre-screen, even if you have like a middle, middle schooler or a high schooler, um, there's some icky parts. Okay. Um, uh, Cleopatra, we actually read this as part of our, um, Egyptian unit, but it fits much better in this unit. Um, you know, cause she was with Julius Caesar and then Mark Antony and she's, it, it kind of ties together what's happening in Egypt and in Rome. Um, so it's good to learn about her in the context of ancient Rome and what was happening. Um, yeah. So I pulled it back out and read it again. My kids did not mind. And I have just like, these ones are not ones I'm going to have linked below because these are just some random books that I had picked out that I had picked up when I was in Rome years ago. And so I just pulled them out for my kids to look at. These are, this is pictures of some of the catacombs. Uh, children discover ancient Rome. And I didn't read these to the kids either. I just had them out for them to peruse. I really like this one because it's, it shows you what it looks like today, and then it shows you what it would have looked like. Um, although my, I think this is a slightly older book. And um, I think we know now, at least in ancient Greece, they painted their buildings. And so I think it might be the case now that they, we know that they painted them, and this book might not reflect that. Um, but I was, I got these years ago. So they're just ones I had around. Um, totally not necessary, but if you are doing a unit on something that you have extra resources for, just pull them out. The kids will be interested. I also showed them some of the pictures from the times I was in Italy and in Rome, um, especially the ones at the Colosseum and at the Forum. We have a couple chapter books here. Um, this is Roman Diary, the Journey of Il Journal of Iliona, Young Slave. Um, this one I read during school time. I wasn't sure if I was going to. At first, my daughter looked at it and said it looked too upsetting. Um, so, and so I wasn't going to, but then she wanted me to. It was very confusing, but we ended up reading and I ended up enjoying it. Um, her and her brother are actually Greek and they become, um, she's a slave. They, their family is, um, they're in like a shipwreck basically or taken by pirates. I forget exactly. Anyway, she's captured, her and her brother are captured and become slaves. Um, and yeah, 
but it's, I don't know how to put this. It's not as depressing as it could be. And I do think that it's important for kids to learn that slavery existed. And um, yeah, so that's, yeah, it, it's not, um, it's written for kids and from the perspective of a kid. And it doesn't include a lot of like gruesome stuff. So um, even though it's about slavery, it, it could be a lot more gruesome. So it's, it, it is aimed at children is what I will say. So we did read that. And I, I actually ended up liking it. Um, okay, so we start, which one comes first? I'm pretty sure it's this one. Pretty sure it's this one. So <laughs> we read this one, then we liked it so much we read the second one. These are like ancient Roman mysteries and they're really fun. We did these for our read alouds. My husband read them in the evening. Again, we read both. We went through them relatively quickly too. We enjoyed them. Moving on to activities and some activities in books. Um, so. I'm gonna mention this again. We didn't do anything out of it, but I'm gonna link it below in case you are interested. It has really good um, science activities and it has um, a section on Rome and it would be better for older children, like uh, upper elementary, I think would be perfect, like third, fourth grade. And um, it, they just need a little bit more time and effort than I was uh, gonna do for this right now. I do have other things that we, we did um, but I, I just didn't end up using this. Um, but I, I do think it's a good resource. So again, I wanted to share with you. So this book I've shown before that I didn't really get to activities in this time. I actually looked through it. I was going to do some of the activities, but, um, I'm a bit of a history nerd myself and having done some research, they just weren't historically accurate enough for me. If I'm going to do an activity, I would like it to be more historically accurate. So, um, but you might not be the same way. So if you just want like, ancient Rome or ancient Greece inspired activities that might give some like flavor of what it was, then this is fine. But like I was looking at the clothing and the recipes and they just weren't historically accurate enough for my liking. So I don't think I will be using these again in the future, like the specific type of book. Um, but I, I think it could be good for a homeschooler who maybe isn't as nitpicky about that as I am. Um, I did, however, use this. I love this series. I think there's one for Vikings. I need to look, I need to look. I want them to have this for every single time period and place that I'm doing. <laughs> um, I think they're older. It's Clive Gifford, Cooking in World Cultures. This is Food and Cooking in Ancient Rome. And it has, um, it has some recipes in here and I did do some, but it also just has information on ancient Rome and on, um, what they ate and like how the food would have been made and um, so it's on bread and bakeries and such. So um, we did use this book and um, I did not make a Roman lamb stew because I don't, I don't usually eat lamb, um, but we did make this um, mixture con casio, um, which is basically a cheese and veggie dip, which was yummy. Um, and I actually got a little bit more in this unit into some living history in that I made um, several recipes and I also made us Roman clothing. And I want to do a separate video going into that in more detail, but I'll just share here that I did a little research on, um, you know, what, what they wore on historical accuracy. And I kind of went down a rabbit hole in learning a little bit more about historical costuming. And so I am going to link here below both um, a couple of channels that I really love. They do not really focus on ancient times, but on historical costuming in case you are like me and want to go down that rabbit hole. I'm also going to link here to um, Tasting History with Max Miller because um, in addition to this, I followed, um, he has recipes and he actually, I think just came up with an, another one recently on, um, a chicken from that time, ancient Rome. Max actually makes historical recipes. They're not all ancient, they're from different time periods, um, but he's also so entertaining to watch. So I'm going to link him below as well. Those are some fun rabbit holes, enjoy. Okay, well, I'm gonna move on to some of the other resources that we used and activities that we did. So I got these ancient Rome uh, sticker books because my kids like sticker books and I saw them. And I think these are from Rainbow Resource. And yes, so they used almost all of them. Um, I got one for each of them just, just to have for fun. And yes, that was, it was good. They enjoyed that. Okay, um, this 
is actually from Absorbent Minds Montessori, and it is a Roman arch. And um, let me see if I can find some of the pieces to show you here. I'll see if I have any footage to show you, which might be better. <laughs> you start with this piece, and then you have, so you start with this uh, piece that's already put together for you, and they have all these little blocks, and they have um, basically a system for you to hold it up while you're building it, and then you can remove it afterwards. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I had to look up some directions. The set I got, I think is used and didn't come with directions. And it was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but, but we tried, <laughs> we tried and we might try again another time. Um, I'm, I'm keeping that set so we can do it again later or if, you know, whenever we come back to this or whenever we want, really. We also continued to use Artistic Pursuits Art of the Ancients and did several activities in this. I love the series. I will link to my review of it here as well. Um, but I want, I just, I love that it gives you, um, like a art study lesson on, on the art of the time. And then it's an inspired work. So, um, I think we did these reliefs and then we did mosaics, which were inspired by mosaics that you would see um, like in Pompeii. Um, I really enjoy, I really enjoy this book. So we, I think pretty much finished up the Art of the Ancients book there with Ancient Rome. And I have a few more activities. My kids really enjoyed them and yeah, so I got them. And this was a, a relatively long unit we did. So these are, it's a Roman coin dig. My son specifically asked for an ancient Roman dig. I wasn't originally going to get him one, but he's enjoyed. We, you know, started the year with doing a dinosaur dig and did a variety. So I found this one that's Roman coins um, and I don't have the coins right now. I think I had to put them away because they were accessible to the baby and choking hazards. But the kids, I actually got two for them and they each did their own. Um, and they had fun digging those out. So these next two took some time and me and my son really spent time together. Actually, had a, we had a really good time working on these. The first is the Colosseum uh, 3D puzzle. And this actually comes apart so you can see like underneath as well. It's, um, let's see, I have the box here to show you. It's cubic fun. It's cubic fun. They have a bunch of different like world um, icons. So of uh oh i don't know what word i want they have a bunch of different ones like on the back you can see they have the eiffel tower empire state building castle in germany that i can't pronounce um but yeah so we had fun doing that it took us i think it only took us an afternoon we sat down and focused um and my husband had the baby and she was littler at the time right now we couldn't do that with the toddler around um we had that and then also i got this um ballista kit which is for older kids it says ages 14 and up but we just worked on it together i think my husband i think we did it on a weekend and my husband helped us as well um it required i think a little bit of gluing and um i don't think i think these pieces belong up here wrapped in those but my son knows how to fix it um it's been living on a high shelf for right now but it actually does shoot little little sticks with foam on the end <laughs> um and he has to do that in an approved location and time. Um, but he enjoyed that as well. I, you know, I got them for both my kids, obviously. My son was only five at the time we did this. My daughter was in first grade and um, she just didn't really, she just wasn't really as interested in these activities. And so I said, that's okay. She, I didn't make her do them. Um, she did like, we did together learn about the Colosseum and, um, you know, a little bit about Roman soldiers. And that's all I really asked. I just want to introduce them. If she's not interested, but he is, then by all means, we're going to follow it. So that's, that's the ballista. And then the last thing I have here is I love games and I'm sure there are more. So if you know of them, please comment below. Um, but I love board games and this was the one that I felt was the best for us. This is seven wonders and it is, it's not, <laughs> it's aimed at adults, right? It's not aimed at like preschoolers or lower elementary, but they were able to play, um, with, with help. Um, and I really like this. It's not just Rome. It's like, there's several different, let me see if I can remember. There's several different civilizations in here. Um, it says lead one of the seven great cities of the ancient world. 
Um, exploit the natural resources of your lands, take part in the eternal march of progress, develop your commercial relationships, and assert your military might. Leave your mark in the history of civilization by building an architectural marvel that will transcend ages to come. So it's um, it's a it's hard to describe. It's not a normal board game where you move around pieces. It's cards that you're choosing. Um, but there's other aspects as well. And I will link below um, in the description box a video of somebody else playing this that describes it so you can get an idea if you're wondering. And I will also have the link to it. Um, it'll probably be an affiliate link. Um, we really enjoy this game. And then I had actually, there is there is another version. There's Seven Wonders Duel, which is a two person game. And I had originally actually gotten this one for my husband and I to play together on date nights. Um, but I prefer the bigger version. So um, what we didn't, what I didn't realize at first was you can actually play the bigger version with two people. You just have like a third person that you kind of both play for, if that makes sense. Um, this one's just much more aggressive, um, which is not something I enjoy. So um, yeah, but it's another option of the same kind of game. It's it's like the same thing, but it, it's designed for two people. So there's just variations on some of the rules. So those are my resources on ancient Rome. We probably could have spent a whole year on it, but there's a lot of history to get to, so I decided to keep us moving. Um, but these are things that we will come back to. A lot of these books, some of the recipes are going to be part of our routine. And um, look forward to a video coming up on the Roman clothing and some of the food that we made. And that's it for our ancient history study. Now on to the Middle Ages, and I will talk to you later.